What's up, everybody? I'm Kirk, and here is a list of words I would use to describe Cruelty Squad. Surreal, nightmarish, joyful, sunny, funny, runny, dreary, depressing, divine, asinine, seedy, greedy, flashy, trashy, fleshy, fishy, artsy, fartsy, polluted, pure, caustic, toxic, demonic, angelic, psychedelic, virtuous, murderous, tactical, impractical, cultish, and odd. Perhaps it's better to say it defies description. I know what some of you are asking. Hey, Kirk, what? 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 I don't blame you. Cruelty Squad might be the most bizarre thing to grace my hard drive in some time, and it is fascinating. An absurd slime ball of gaming that, as a wise swamp ogre would say, possesses many layers. Fascinating is one thing, though. Is this fuzzy onion something that deserves your attention, or should we just walk away and pretend we never saw it? Well, grab a quick shower, equip some flesh, pack some bait, and detach from reality. It's time to venture into Cruelty Squad. <laughs> But before all that, if you're new here and you're digging what you're seeing, please consider subscribing and liking to help support this channel. Alrighty, let's begin. Originally released into Early Access back in January of 2021, with the full release dropping the following June, Cruelty Squad was developed by Consumer Soft Products and is the brainchild of surrealist multimedia artist Vile Calillo, who translated his unnerving, exuberant style into the game. I highly recommend checking out his Instagram to peek some of his art for the game, but also for his earlier paintings and sketches, which I think are pretty fantastic. Cruelty Squad is a tactical first-person shooter in the vein of old-school Rainbow Six, mixed with an immersive sim in the style of the 90s Looking Glass games and Deus Ex, although I think the dev's description says it the best. An immersive power fantasy simulator with tactical stealth elements set in a sewage-infused garbage world. <laughs> Like Rainbow Six, combat is unforgiving. The player can be killed in just a few hits, but so can the enemy. Therefore, careful tactics have to be employed in order to survive, at least initially. And like in an immersive sim, each mission gives the player heaps of agency. Gotta say agency at least once when talking about immersive sims, am I right? Players can complete missions in any way they see fit, and as they progress and gain newer abilities, they'll find more options available to complete each level more efficiently. On paper, it might seem like an unusual gameplay combination, and as you'll see, it's not perfect. But in practice, the two styles complement each other nicely. In a good immersive sim, the player's actions and the way they play should matter. And when you combine that with high-stakes tactical combat, it makes everything you do that much more consequential. <laughs> It may not be obvious by the eccentric art direction, but Cruelty Squad's narrative is firmly rooted within the cyberpunk genre. Set some time in the distant future, the world of cruelty is one defined by megacities and megacorporations, where consumerism is the religion of the day, pollution is a part of everyday life, the gap between the rich and poor is wider than the Grand Canyon, and the line between machine and man is fuzzier than my head the morning after my 21st. You play as a cybernetic, emotionally detached mercenary who is good at one thing and one thing only. Wearing dope sunglasses and killing people. Your bootylicious merc has been hired by the Godhead Corporation to carry out wet work operations, basically assassinating competitors or people who have angered them. CEOs, police officers, swamp people, game developers, you name it. It's a narrative that is both horrific and hilarious, loosely conveyed through chatting with NPCs and mission briefings from your handler, who looks like the hellspawn of Job the Hut and Pizza the Hut. <laughs> Despite its world being psychotic and confusing, Cruelty Squad does an excellent job of clearly conveying its themes. Themes like the surveillance state, corporate power, wealth inequality, transhumanism, and anti-capitalism, to name a few. It's a biting, satirical critique of a first world society. Some players, in fact, might feel a sense of dread when they realize the game is not so much a surreal power fantasy, but rather a bloodstained mirror. And I thoroughly enjoyed the thought rabbit holes this game threw me down.
Cruelty Squad is composed of 13 missions, with 6 secret missions that can be unlocked, making for a total of 19. Every mission has the same objective, kill the targets and get to the exit, and upon completion, the player is rewarded with cash. In between missions, you interact with a menu, where you can buy and equip abilities, look at the stock market, more on both of those in a bit, choose your loadout, and get briefed. You can also replay previous missions at any time, however many times you want or need to. And players can also turn on the punishment modifier, where enemies will inflict twice as much damage, but the rewards will pay out twice as much as well. Missions are made up of corporate office buildings, seaside warehouses, a cruise ship, and even a casino, to name a few. Level design is a highlight in this game. Maps are constructed in a way where players will have an easy time navigating them while also layering in numerous different pathways and options. And sure, while the visuals are abstract to the nth, they are implemented logically to help the player navigate with points of interest clearly highlighted. They may be crazy, but there is some gameplay logic behind these aesthetics. Exploration is highly encouraged. Adventurous players will likely stumble upon hidden side areas, often holding secrets or new equipment, and the designers were quite smart in how they laid out their breadcrumbs. In the initial hours, players will find much of the design to be in line with classic immersive sims. The very first level is a good example of this, where your choices are clear. You can go straight through the front door, guns blazing, go to the right, climb over a fence into an alley with a side entrance, or climb up on the buildings and go through an air vent. Good old Warren would be proud. However, as you progress, you can purchase and install new biomechanical abilities that open up new level pathways as well as give the player more combat options. To name a few, there's several flavors of high jump to allow you to scale and climb over obstacles, protective armor to make traversing poisonous areas easier, and a grenade that can blow open certain locked doors. What really opens up the levels, though, is the Grappendix, a grappling hook made out of your intestines that can stick to anything and swing you around. I suppose Cruelty Squad could be seen as a psychedelic version of Inspector Gadget. While the jank of it can take some getting used to, it really is amazing how much freedom this ability affords you, to the point where the player can even go beyond the bounds of the map, with no invisible walls to stop them. Cruelty Squad is a game that refuses to restrict the player. If what you do works, it works. The cost of this is, well, some straight up jank. But in this game's case, the jank does not really detract, but rather complement the eccentric atmosphere. Upon completing a mission, the player is given a letter grade from C to S. Initially, I assumed the score was tallied by my time and how many people I killed or didn't kill, but no, it's just based on completion time. That's it. I thought this was odd, especially when compared to other games in the genre that would punish you for needless killing. But then I realized that for a player to obtain an A or S rank means that they were navigating these levels in a way where their only focus was on the targets, and got out without any other fuss. Someone who gets a C rank is likely going through murdering left and right and getting into time-consuming firefights. So I guess it makes sense. Plus, I kind of like the subversion of morality playing very little part in this game. <laughs> A major aspect of Cruelty Squad is growing your cash rewards by trading within the financial markets. Money can be invested in the stock market, and yes, your actions in the game will affect it. So invest wisely and pay close attention, because a savvy player can totally manipulate this system, as they should. If you happen to splatter an enemy in combat, you can collect their organs and sell them on the black market, which behaves similar to the stock market. But that's not all. You can also fish. Yes, fish. Equip a rod and find a pool of water, and you can catch a variety of species that can be traded on the fish market. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm sure you've no doubt noticed the lumpy borders around the screen. These aren't for aesthetics, they serve a function, correlating to your form. There are several forms you can take on during the game that directly affect the difficulty. The top form is Divine Link, which represents the second hardest difficulty in the game. Enemies can deal full damage to you, however the player has access to special doors that provide shortcuts and secrets. It's lost upon death though, so caution with it is wise, and to get it back requires some 
punishment. Flesh Automaton is the standard form and is the second easiest difficulty. Enemies do half the damage, but the player loses the perks of Divine Link. Power in Misery is the easiest form, obtained if the player dies too many times. In this form, there is no longer a reconstruction penalty upon death, and the player is able to eat corpses to regain health. Because of course they can. Most first-time players will be primarily living in this form. Don't think of it as a punishment, but rather training wheels to get you ready for the late game. There's also a secret fourth form, which is the hardest difficulty. This form adds new targets to each level and more enemies that randomize. It may be better to think of it more as a new game plus mode. It's a really cool and well-implemented system that dare I say, is quite innovative, allowing the player to alter their difficulty strictly by their actions while also providing a clever way to add more replay value. Combat is the weakest aspect of the game. It is enjoyable, the quote-unquote realistic, tactical, unforgiving nature of it can be satisfying, especially when you splatter a baddie with precision. And there is something fun and funny about tactically clearing rooms that look like they belong in Pee Wee's sex dungeon. But what irks me is the enemy AI, which when aggroed will dart around like a two-year-old that just drank a gallon of cold brew. It's frustrating. God damn it, stay still so I can kill you! There's a lean mechanic, which is nice, but its usefulness is questionable. Leaning around corners, your typically sharp aim goes wild, likely implemented for balance so the player doesn't abuse it. But your aim is so all over the place, I found it much more effective to just aim down my sights and shift around the corner to get my shots off. Now granted, some weapons work a little better with it, and it is still a great tool for scouting and popping off an enemy that's right there. But you can still get through this game just fine without ever using it. The reload mechanic is strange. Map to the right mouse button by default. To reload, you have to click it down and move your gun down with the mouse to reload. In what might be a tongue-in-cheek reference to Goldeneye, where guns always reloaded by going down off screen. It's not bad, it just takes some getting used to, and will cause some unnecessary deaths in the process when you don't pull your mouse down far enough to reload. The other thing I should warn about is that, sure, the game is a tactical shooter, but as you progress, become more powerful, and understand level layouts better, it's easy to start rolling through these levels like any other first-person shooter, splatting enemies left and right. That's not a knock against it. The progression of power is one of the best aspects of the game, but if you're hoping to be taken back to the good old days of Tom Clancy, I don't think this game will do the trick for you. Also, some of the enemies I just flat out despise. There are these fat-headed goons that if they see you will warp your FOV and even cause you to uncontrollably shoot your weapon. I don't care what effect you're trying to go for, I hate it when control is taken away from me. But the worst are the slugs. Fuck the slugs. Slugs love to ambush you in places where it's hard to get away from them, like narrow walkways and air vents. They're hard to shoot and if they do hit you, they cause a toxic crisis, basically poison, where your health will begin to drain and accuracy will take a nosedive. They can eat easily ruin a mission. Something I haven't mentioned yet, you can't save during these missions. You have to complete them in one go, which makes these little floppy dicks that much more of a nuisance. To be fair, I can only be so critical of the combat because the truth is, it's going to be as prominent as the player wants it to be. You can totally beat these missions without ever firing a bullet, and you do have non-lethal means to slip past enemies. They're not as fun, but they are there. Plus, as I explained before, if you're trying to get the best scores on these levels, you're likely not engaging in combat. Finally, let's talk about Cruelty Squad's presentation. The visuals of Cruelty Squad is as if you took all the worst graphic design elements of the late 90s and early 2000s, the films of David Cronenberg, DMT, a pound of raw beef, a few shots of sewer water, and a pre-patched copy of the PS4 version of Cyberpunk 2077, mixed them in a blender, left them out in the sun for a week, and then topped the concoction with neon frosting and sunflowers. Yeah, this is a wild ass looking game. Cruelty Squad is not aesthetically pleasing whatsoever. It revels in placing the player in a world that will unnerve them scare them, alienate them, and likely disgust them. Oh, and make them giggle, too. Textures are nonsensical, smiling faces, polka dots, rotting meat, on top of the fact that the game harkens to the retro graphics of a mid-90s PS1 game, making it more unsettling, not unlike the infamous LSD Dream Simulator. 
Cruelty Squad's art direction leans heavily into surrealism. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's a shocking statement to all of you. And I would say, like most surrealist art, the goal of it is not to immerse the player into a rational reality, but rather spark a thought process in them that will bring them to a deeper understanding. Admittedly, I am not well versed enough in surrealism to confidently talk about it, but playing the game, I was reminded of the theater of cruelty, a surrealist theatrical movement back in the 20s that aimed to shock and assault the senses of audiences with surreal imagery, lighting, and gestural acting. And within this context, I find its definition of cruelty to be fascinating, in that it's not meant to be taken as something harmful or mean to the audience, but rather something that would crumble their reality false reality, as its practitioners would argue, to reveal the truths in their existence. Hmm, interesting. I would definitely say this game's graphics are an assault on the senses. Perhaps the cruelty in Cruelty Squad carries this same definition. <laughs> This game is wide open to interpretation, and you could easily spend hours theorizing on how its visuals relate to its political and cultural messages. And for some gamers, that's going to be most of the fun. And if you ask me, I think this game's visuals are provocative and rad warts and all. I have a lot of respect for a developer who is not only willing to put their own unique artistic style out there, but do it at 100 miles an hour with no apologies. And like I spoke to earlier, gameplay is always in mind in their implementation, making it so the player is able to approach and interact with the world, despite its abstract nature. Music is equally bizarre. Some tracks are synthesized beeps and boops, some dark and atmospheric, some guttural and noisy. They're as random as the visuals themselves and fit this universe of trash and bile quite well. My only real complaint is the performance. For whatever reason, cruelty never ran amazing for me. No matter how much I tweaked the few settings I could, I was always experiencing micro hitches and stutters throughout. It didn't make the game unplayable or anything, but it was a bummer. I should also mention that the UI does take a little getting used to, but I think the dev did do a good job of striking a balance between functionality and the game's bizarre style. I adore this game. Cruelty Squad is one of the most unique shooters I've ever played and is easily one of my favorite games of 2021. Though far from perfect, it's an engaging, immersive sim and a fascinating artistic statement that not only challenges culture, but also gaming norms. This probably goes without saying, but it's not for everybody. However, I think it's for more people than you'd think. If you're a fan of immersive sims, this is definitely something to check out. And if you've been watching this and at any point thought, huh, this does look interesting. That's enough of a reason right there to try this out. Trust me. The last thing I want to compliment is the sheer amount of hours you can get out of it. A playthrough of this game might take you around six or seven hours, but just like Nier Automata, when you beat it, you haven't really beaten it. You can drop dozens upon dozens of hours in the post game, trying to purchase every ability, find all the secrets, and get all the best times. It is so easy to get obsessed with it, working to understand each map like the back of your hand and becoming more and more powerful. Power fantasy indeed, Cruelty Squad will turn you into a grinding, greedy monster. And for me, I love just about every minute of it. But what do you guys think? Did Cruelty Squad grab you like it did me, or is there simply not enough bleach to wash out your eyes? Be sure to let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and ring the bell for notifications on future uploads. It's a couple clicks for you, but a massive help for this channel. And be sure to come say hi in the Kirk Collects Discord, linked in the description. I'm Kirk, and thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there.